Hello and welcome to this video series on the Indian Express News Analysis. So today's date is 30th October 2018 and we are going to discuss here all the important articles from the editorial page and the opinion page available in Indian Express. So let's begin and see what are the articles that we are going to discuss today. And today's date is 30th October 2018. So if you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe because here you get daily The Hindu Analysis along with Indian Express Analysis in two different languages, Hindi and English. Also, if you go to the playlist, you'll find the Indian Polity and Economic Lecture also. So my name is Akash Raj and you can read about me right here. So the left article on this page is basically about the role of government and their interference in institutions. Here the institution can be RBI and the universities also. And we'll compare it with the below article this is about the Delhi University what has happened is their syllabus have recently got changed for the political science because what they feel is there are some of the books which are more tilted towards anti-Hindu sentiments and also the urban nuxalism so that's the reason they have uh, actually changed their whole syllabus in order to avoid studying all these books so we'll try to understand how both these articles are talking about the free speech and the freedom to express and also the speech we'll try to understand holistically in these two in this particular video also this below article is about the money laundering so basically if you are getting money or basically generating wealth through means which are not correct or basically all the corrupt practices that you're using is used to get you a lot of wealth in that case all the wealth that you have accumulated has to be stored somewhere which is away from the eye of the government institutions how will you do that you'll send the money outside the country so in order to do that, what happens in Pakistan is they're using the bank accounts of normal people, normal citizens of the country who are not so high profile and usually their bank accounts are not so, uh, easily evident or being tracked or monitored. So they're using their bank account to send the money to any Swiss bank or any other places or trying to invest in some property outside the country. So you might have remembered or basically you can remember that there were some Panama paper leaks and so the Paradise uh, Papers where list of names of high profile people with their corrupt uh, money and how much well they have where do they have it all those lists came out so after that what happened was Nawaz Sharif was ousted of the Pakistan and then came the Imran Khan you need to understand what the consequences of which body is there for uh, actually monitoring this money laundering and how this money laundering is majorly used for terror funding we will try to understand this in this particular video this particular article is about the CBI the recent tussle there's no important points here but I'll just briefly explain you what is happening so recently what has happened is there's two bureaucrats, the director and the special director of CBI were in tussle for power. And in between what has happened is they started corruption charges against each other. That's the reason why CVC, that is the Central Vigilance Committee, Commission actually has come into picture. And they are going to try to investigate the whole issue over which the supervisory will be done by the AK Patnayak, who is the Supreme Court judge. So right now the whole aim of the government is to try to get the trust of people back into the institution. Because you need to understand any high profile case comes up, the, the case goes to CBI. In order to keep the trust uh, as it is, you need to actually give the justice right then and now so for that there has been a 15 days time to in investigate and give a verdict saying whether it was constitutional to actually remove the director even though the power of cbi comes from a delhi special police establishment act which clearly states that you cannot remove a director be uh, uh, before the tenure of two years and but he was removed so is it constitutionally valid and the second thing is if the committee that is a lokpal search committee made up of three people prime minister chief justice of india and the leader of opposition Position, are supposed to nominate the director and special director why are they not vetting the list which is actually being given to them by the home ministry they need to check the uh, the background of it the, uh, the seniority of it, and the work of it only then they should be nominated to such key profiles that has been suggested right over in this article and this article here and this article here is basically about the Me Too campaign, Sabrimala and the decriminalization of 377. There have been a recent verdict in all these three things and the campaign about Me Too. So we have discussed this uh, long back and even again and again. So we'll not be discussing it right here. There are no important points coming up in these two articles. So we'll not be discussing these two articles. And here you will, it's very important. This is about the tuberculosis. How are you going to counter it when it comes to India and the aim to reduce it by 2030? We're going to discuss this in detail. And this one article on the right side is very important. This is about the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. So this treaty was done between two important countries. The first one is US and the second one is USSR, also known as right now as Russia. This was done in 1987 between two important bodies, Ronald Reagan from US and uh, Michael Gorbachev from Russia. So they actually uh, had this treaty, which means 
after this 3d you will no more proliferate or try to increase the ground based uh, ballistic missile so these ballistic missile are uh, basically missile which follows a projectile motion so you launch a missile from here it goes up right here and after this it falls on the grab because of the gravity it falls on the design designated target so it follows a projectile motion and such missiles are known as ballistic missiles so what they're trying to say is all these ballistic missiles which are ground based that is that you're uh, throwing this uh, basically missile from ground then you cannot develop them but we have other ways like there are ballistic missiles which can be launched from air there are ballistic missiles which can be launched by sea also but here this treaty is talking only about the ground based ballistic missile that's the sole reason why trump actually wants to come out of this particular treaty there are other reasons also about china angle we'll discuss that in detail so today's quote is guys be happy and a reason will come along you need to understand that if you're preparing for any exam you want to achieve something in life you need to understand the journey is very important and in the journey you need to be very happy it's only then that you will enjoy the destination in order to enjoy the destination to the fullest you need to understand the journey has to be really really happy and that's the best way to avoid all the side effect that might come when you are actually preparing for any of the exam so let's begin so the first one is basically about the nation versus institution. So what has happened is most of the universities, the central universities, you, they have been applying a law known as the uh, Indian Civil Services Conduct and Rule. So what does this rule means? It means that you cannot or basically write or speak against the government or their policies. So what it basically does is now your professors cannot talk or basically write in newspapers saying uh, or basically contradicting or criticizing any of the policies. So what it does is it is limiting your free speech. You are unable to actually express what you feel about a particular policy. So this is trying to curtail your freedom of expression by the government. Also, recently there was a committee which actually suggested that there should be a different regulatory payment body which will regulate the payment. Because after demonetization, the amount of payment that has been digitally has increased a lot. So this particular committee has suggested that we'll make a new payment regulatory body which will actually regulate it. But RBI showed a complete dissent which said that RBI has been managing the payment ever since its beginning. Also, payment is a small part of banking itself. So since RBI was actually regulating it since long back, even now it should regulate the same. So that's the reason why RBI does not want it power to get diluted because of the interference from government. Also, government is trying to actually uh, siphon all the fund from the RBI to the government uh, coffers because they want to get more and more schemes implemented so that they can get a lot of votes and because this is basically a populist move for them. Try to get the uh, masses uh, for them for themselves. So this all these moves are trying to interfere in this institution. We need to understand if in order to improve the standard of education, health or anything, you need to give autonomy to the this institution also one more debate comes up that is basically whom should get the highest amount of power it should the popular government or basically the unelected executives here the popular government are those people whom you elect and they join the parliament or the state legislature and here the unelected government are basically the governors of rbi the university principals or basically the dean all those people are basically elect uh, nominated so who should get the most power you need to understand all these nominated people come with domain expertise so they understand the domain if they are coming from education they know it they come from finance field they know it so that dom uh, that uh, domain knowledge will help us a lot when it comes to decision making and when it comes to popular government they take care of the faith whether a particular act is in good faith for the people or not when it comes to faith of the particular act the popular government will come in into the picture and when it comes to getting the right thing the domain knowledge and using it to, for the decision making these unelected people will come into picture in order to get the most and the get the efficient functioning of a, go a government you need to hit the mid path because mid path between these two institutions will only help us grow and the other thing that we need to understand is because government is trying to in uh, interfere in a lot of other things also. I've told you about the university, I've told you about the RBI, but it's also interfering in the matters of religion. You understand the Sabarimala case in terms of employment also, because if you know the recent incidents in Gujarat, they have actually given an executive order saying 80% of the people who will be recruited in Gujarat will be from the native. Because of one of the issue, they actually implemented this executive order. We need to understand that this anti-migrant sentiments actually led to the uh, Br uh, Britain exit from European Union also which is going to happen on 29th March of 2019 we need to take some clue from there also because if you stop actually migrant allowing into your state or your country what happens eventually is the labor market in your country will get influenced the investment that you get might also be affected so this is the exact scenario that you need to understand before you become anti-immigrant 
So this is about the same about the conduct rules which will be applied in the universities. You can read here, debate and discussion, dissent, long live. And this is about the money laundering case. And this is a very important body that you should remember. The name of this body is Financial Action Task Force. So what does this work? Uh, so this is basically monitoring all the money laundering that is happening across the world. So they are actually tracking it and they have found that Pakistan is the place where actually most of the money laundering happens. And the reason why this money laundering happens is, is to basically fund all the terrorist activities that happens here. There's a whole reason why they have actually blacklisted Pakistan in the recent times. So what happens is most of the trust across the world which actually reduce for the Pakistan. So we are trying to actually isolate them when it comes to the terror activities that they are doing or the financial this money laundering cases that they are doing. So this body becomes very important and the headquarter of it is basically in Paris. I'll show you in the map also and it was fun, founded in basically 1989. Along with that, even in India, we have a particular act known as the Prevention of Money Laundering Act of 2002. So the whole purpose of it is to say you want to do a Benamin transaction. Basically, it's not under your name, but under your driver, your relatives, and you are trying to send the or trying to buy a property through this illegal money. Then what happens is if you come under notice or you are monitored by these institutions, they will do they will seize all your property. And once seized by the government, it will become very difficult for you to actually get it back. Or even if you pay the fine, the fine will be very much higher than the amount of money that you are laundered actually. And this act came up in 2002 and have was actually commenced from 2005. Moving forward, I told you I will be showing you France and right here you can see France, the capital over here is Paris. And you need to understand all the important adjacent countries uh, which are touching the France. First thing is you can see here Spain whose capital is Madrid. And here recently there was an issue of Catalonia which you can see right over here in Barcelona. The Catalonian wants to come out of Spain that all the secessionism was going on. And here you can see Italy which is touches France. Here you'll see Switzerland whose capital is Bern. Here you'll see Germany whose capital is Berlin. You'll see even Belgium whose capital is Brussels which is touching France. Recently our Vice President Venkaya Naidu was on visit to Brussels also also on a yesterday's video when i was talking about the brexit i told you about an important channel between uk and france which is known as the english channel also there are some important choke points here which you need to understand that is basically the gibraltar strait so say you want to send uh, an export want to uh, export say anything you want to export a mobile phones from usa to italy how will you how will you uh, actually trade it it will come from USA and passes through this one state known as Gibraltar Strait, and then it will go to Italy. So this makes this point a very important choke point. Choke point means say if there is any important or emergency coming up right here and this point gets choked or basically stopped and no trade happens, then the, your trade will directly get affected. That's the reason it's called a choke point. There are various choke points in the world map. Say the Malacca Strait, which I've showed you earlier in the videos also, Strait of Hormuz, Mandab Strait, all these are important choke points. And the next thing that we're going to discuss is about the tuberculosis. So first thing first, understand the basics. So what happens is this directly affects your lungs. And this is basically uh, caused by a microbacterium tuberculosis. So it's basically a bacteria. So this can actually be communicated from one person to other also. You need to understand two or three more important things that to in order to curtail this, in order to reduce it or eliminate it by 2030, there are some important steps that a government needs to take. First thing is to develop a national action policy for tuberculosis. Understand that this is a very important issue because most of the people are dying even before uh, even before the age of 30, people are dying because of tuberculosis because proper treatment is not available. There is no standards of treatment. One hospital will treat you in another way. If you go to another, it will give you another treatment. So that continuity of treatment is never there. So you need to have a national action plan for that. Once plan is formed, you need to implement it. For implement, you need to train your people, the workers who are going to work on the ground level in the hospitals, they have to be trained for tuberculosis treatment. And then there has to be a, a general awareness among the people so that they understand tuberculosis is a very big thing because most of the people are, are not aware about how actually dangerous that this particular disease can be because this acts as a time bomb. But when you encounter this for the first time, you feel that it's a normal cough, but slowly, slowly it gets aggravated. And at the end, death is the only thing that you will get. So that's the reason the general awareness is very important. And once the patients are identified, you need to get the feedback from them also, because only when you get the feedback, you can actually improve on the quality and the implementation part, which you're doing when it comes to reducing the tuberculosis. Now coming to what is being said in the article. So what we are doing right now is a top down approach. That is, we are making the policy at the higher level, but when it comes to implementation, it is very less. So in order to curtail that, what we can actually do is we can actually get all the private hospitals and the public hospitals 
get on the same page understand how exactly should the medication be given when it's come to tuberculosis followed by which there are some important issues like the quality variation like one hospital will treat you really well other will give you a different medication altogether so say a person is going to hospital number 1 followed by hospital number 2 for the same medication because of the cost that has been reduced but he will get a different treatment altogether but one important thing which you need to remember when it comes to tuberculosis is the continuity of the medication if you leave the medication in between that means say from moving from phase 1 to phase 2 you left the treatment then your all the disease causing agents will become resistance to the existing uh, vaccine that has been given to you in that case you need to develop more and more vaccines through research and development which is not happening at the current time so in order to co- counter that we have uh, one system known as susceptibility uh, test and what happens here is you are actually detected whether you uh, you are actually been resistant to a particular vaccine or not once detected you will be given the right vaccine followed which you will be tested for this mdr tb which is known as multi drug resistant tuberculosis so this is one drug that we are actually developing which is uh, has been seen on trials that is very effective and which will be implemented very soon also also in this article we are talking about the standard patient test so what test is it so they actually send an expert who is actually uh, aware about everything that is related to tuberculosis so he goes to the private hospitals and try to act as a patient and try to understand how actually medication is happening across all the private hospitals you need to understand this is not a sting operation all they are trying to do is trying to understand how exactly is the medication happening across the private hospitals and trying to get them on the same page and trying to give the uniformity when it comes to giving medication also because we know the number of doctor that are available in india are very less what we can do is get all the ayush doctors which are involved in all the ayush programs we can give them a bridge course and try to bring them on the same level at par with the uh, doctors which actually treat tuberculosis and give them access to all those capabilities and all those technologies so that they can use and actually medicate all the patient which are available and for that you need to understand what ayush is so basically this comes from the ministry of ayush and what ayush stands for is basically ayurveda yoga yoga naturopathy unani siddha and homeopathy all these sum up to formed as ayush so this was this means particular ministry was formed in 2014 and the headquarter is in new delhi and this i've already talked to you about this is basically intermediate range nuclear force treaty so based on this i've already told you that this is basically to restrict or basically eliminate the ground based ballistic missiles also why is america against it why does trump wants to come out of this treaty the first thing i've told you is that this only is basically for the ground base air base sea base there is no control over it also this treaty is between only two countries us and russia other countries can actually make ballistic missiles so because uh, of china making so many ballistic missiles us feels that this particular treaty is very discriminatory that's the reason why they want to come out so based on this on the backdrop there are some important thing that you need to know there are other groups arrangement and even uh, the treaties which you need to understand the first thing is the nuclear su- supplier group india is not a part of this group but we are trying to be a part of this group if you see the founded year it is basically 1974 it is the same year when when we did the first nuclear test in 1974 that is known as the smiling buddha project also the pokhran one so after this this nsg came up and uh, we are not a part of it because we are, we have not signed npt that is basically non proliferation treaty where uh, where we actually claim that we will not be using nuclear power for actually creating any of the missiles so since we are not a part of npt we we are being blocked from actually entering n- uh, nuclear supplier groups by china because they say that if india gets the access to nsg then pakistan also should get so that's the reason our nt has been blocked from nsg for right now but we are trying to get into it by getting into a lot of other agreements also because if you know that we are a part of mtcr what is mtcr missile technology control region under this particular agreement we can actually create a uh, missile of more than 300 km range after we have signed into this that's the same reason why our brahmos is more than uh, has a range of more than 3000 300 km and followed by there's one more ag- arrangement known as vasanar arrangement what happens here is the nuclear material that you use actually can be of dual purpose how the first one is to use it as an arm and other one is to use for the energy to produce energy electricity you can use a nuclear power so there are dual use of it so in order to make sure that you are using it in a proper way so this particular arrangement is there to regulate and technology transfer that you do all these will be regulated by this particular arrangement and recently even we have joined this particular arrangement known as vasanar arrangement also there is one more arrangement which or basically group which we have joined known as the australia group so this group is basically referred to as the biological weapon convention 
if you know that recently what happened was in syria there was a biological uh, attack by uh, it has been claimed that it was done by assad so there is no much credibility about whether it was done by assad or not but in order to curtail it or to reduce it what this particular convention does it it tries to eliminate all the biological weapons that you can use it can be chemical weapons all the biological weapons that can be used anywhere so this particular group australia group tried to reduce it so we are a part of only three right now that is mtcr wasnar and australian group we are only trying to get into nsg but our entry is being blocked by china so that's all for today guys i hope this helped you a lot let's revise everything that we have learned today we learned about the inf treaty all the important missile control regime nuclear regimes or agreements that we are part of which we are trying to be a part of we have studied about it followed which we actually understood about the role of tuberculosis how we can reduce this we studied about ministry of ayush followed which we understood the money laundering issues we understood this body known as fatf also known as financial action task force also we understood about the institution versus government how government is interfering in the work of universities and rbi so that's all for today guys i hope this video helped you a lot if it helped please like this video and also subscribe to my channel and share it as much as you can among your friends thank you and have a nice day jai hind